the story. Hi, and now we're back with uh, the director and cast of Wolf, a movie that's uh, debuting in Dallas, at least. It debuted at the South by Southwest Festival uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, to start, I guess, one, since there's a number of you, why don't you guys go down the row and kind of introduce yourself and say what your role was in the film. Right. Well, I'm Yaki Smith. I'm the writer and director. Irma P. Hall, and I play the grandmother. Jordan Cooper, and I play the role of Carl. Michaela Gibson, and I play Nona. Well, yeah, okay, this was your first uh, feature film, and uh, it's got a lot of buzz down at, so at South By. I mean, there's a lot of pieces written about it, and it's one of the more an anticipated films um, here. I mean, we're, and it's also a very challenging film. I mean, how did, how did the story come about, and how did you get about writing it, and what said you've been doing a number of shorts, okay, is it time to do my first feature? Uh, well, um, you know, I uh, grew up in the church, and so I was sort of exposed to the good and the bad of it all. And so I know... Um, some people, some friends of mine who, who have been um, molested by clergymen uh, or by trusted people in the church. Um, and so I think those stories have always lived inside of me. Um, I didn't quite know I would ever make a film about them, but they were there. Uh, and then there was a documentary that I watched called Deliver Us From Evil, which was about a, um, a, a pedophile priest who had molested, I think, 50 or, or more kids. And it was interesting because for me it was the first time that I had seen um, a pedophile um, humanized, not excused for his actions, but given a backstory. And we sort of understood him. We understood how because of his own abuse in the past that he became a predator because he never dealt with it. And then you also saw on the flip side of that, um, you know, how um, the, his victims sort of were suffering and their families were suffering. And so sort of I, I took what I knew and I, and I, and I took um, that film and I sort of put it all together and out came Wolf. Um, and as far as, you know, jumping from short to feature, it, I, I think this was a huge challenge, but I think it was time. I've, I've had, a, you know, um, a good amount of success with short films, um, and I've been trying to make a feature since, since 2006, but I never could get the money together, never could assemble the right cast, and, you know, just, just so many production challenges. But finally, uh, this was the time me and my producing partner put our heads together, Ralph Lopez, and, um, you know, here we go. Well, you mentioned it for... for Everyone who doesn't know, the movie is about um, a young man who is molested by a pastor yes. and how the family kind of deals with that. Yes. And, uh, I mean, one of the things that, that struck me is what you said. I mean, what's interesting is, is the amount of empathy that's there. Not, not no excuses, but empathy. And how do you, when you're writing that kind of script, how do you, how do you know that you're, you're sort of playing the emotions right? Because it seems like it's a very the delicate balance is sort of what makes it work, but it's also what makes it hard to pull off. You know, it's, it's funny because I think it's probably one of the hardest things I, I ever had to write. It's not my first feature screenplay, but I think it was my most challenging because I wanted to make sure that I was approaching the subject with grace and I wasn't, you know, condemning the church. And so it took me a while really to, to quite honestly, to strike that balance so that I would give everybody humanity. Uh, I think when we started shooting, we were on draft 18 or 19 because it just took me a while to hash it out, to do a bunch of research, to really, you know, um, um, uh, just, I guess, capture, like you say, the humanity and sort of the multidimensionality of the characters. Um, but, you know, it, 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 it was important to me that I did that because I didn't want to judge him and I didn't want to judge anybody because I think everybody in this story plays a part in what happened. And I wanted to sort of expose all of those faults because I think in exposing all of those faults, that makes us all see our faults and then we all have to deal with them. Uh, to open it up to the cast a little bit, I wonder if you could pass it down. Everyone kind of talk a little bit about what your first reactions were to the script and how you kind of got involved in the, in the project. Well, when I read the script, I was very interested in it. I taught high school here for 24 years, so I've had lots of experience with young people, and I've taught um, what they call inner city schools mainly. So, um, and I have um, formed some deep relationships with a lot of teenagers. And, and as my mother said always, it's what you don't know really that hurts you. And a lot of times young people have, have uh, told me things, uh, they have let me in on what was going on with them, you know, when they were having a problem. And um, I have always thought that uh, instead of sweeping things under the rug or hiding them or anything, and I also grew up in the church uh, many churches, in fact. <laughs> I went on a little detour to, to explore various churches, very, uh, various religions of the world. For Then I came back 
to the Christian church because that suits me best. But uh, there are things in place, and I, I think um, uh, that a lot of times I have seen people leave the church because uh, these things that were happening to them were not addressed or they were expected to be already helped when they weren't. Uh, they were shunned or whatever. And I thought it was something they should be told. And also, I had seen Yaki's work before, and I knew what he was capable of. So I had a lot of confidence in him as the director. As an actor, what I look for is uh, uh, someone who really will direct me and um, uh, pull me back if I get over the top or pull me up <laughs> if I need to be up or where, wherever I need to be so that I can uh, feel confident to be whoever the character is. And, of course, um, I've d mainly uh, chosen to do older women, so um, I've, I've known a lot of older women. <laughs> I finally grew into an older woman. I started when I was 36, and now I'm 77, so I've grown into one. So I, I know them pretty well. Uh, and I am a grandmother. So <laughs> but other than that, nothing like that has ever happened in my family. But as I said, I did know them. So I was very interested in it. Um, I approached the script uh, at first with caution, but then when I read it, I knew that I was I was all into it and I wanted to do it because I knew the capability of it. I knew that it could heal people and it could touch people and it could teach people how to forgive and inspire them to love and inspire to forgive. So I was more excited about it, but... <laughs> It took me a while to convince my parents to let me do it because this is my first film. I had never really acted professionally and gotten a chance to show myself. But, but um, it, was, it was a process, and it was an awesome process. I loved every minute of it. I wish I could go back every day and redo everything. But it's, a, it, it's an awesome cast. It's an awesome director, awesome producers, awesome crew, awesome story. I'm just, I'm just glad. I'm just glad. <laughs> Well, how did you, how, how did Yake find you of your first film? I mean, what, what was that process like? Um, a friend told me about an audition. She sent me out on, uh, me and a few other boys on an audition. And then about a few weeks later, I got a call back. And then I went back for the call back. And about two weeks later, I got the call for the role. So it was, it was basically my first audition as well. So I always knew I wanted to act. But the only, the only chance I got it, the only time I got a chance to act was when I wrote my own script, wrote my own story, and played all the characters and <laughs> stole my mom's camera to do it. So, yeah, but I, I love it. I love it. I love being able to dodge in and out and tell these, tell these characters stories that need to be told. Everybody's stories deserve to be told and deserve to be heard by somebody. So I'm always glad to do that. Um, when I read the script, I loved it. Um, I'm a pastor's daughter. Both my parents are in the ministry. Both of my grandfathers were in the ministry. Um, so I was in church 24-7. And um, what I really like about the script is that um, it takes the pastor and shows that he's human. And I've seen um, people take their pastors and make them a god, which is very, very wrong. Um, and I see that mistake destroy a lot of people's lives. So what I really, really loved about the script, that it, it was honest. And um, like, like he said, he, he approached it with grace. And um, it didn't wrap up everything in a pretty bow at the end. It was uh, truthful. You know, I don't want to give away too much, but in the end, it's not over. Uh, the family... Is going is heading towards healing, but it's not over. So um, I've worked with Yaki before because I'm his wife as well, <laughs> and um, he's a true artist, and that's what I love most about working with him. It, he comes from a true place. He works from his heart, and um, um, it's realism, and um, it affects people. So I love the script when I first read it. Well, you mentioned your your parents being in the church and. Part of the theme, one of the themes of the movie, and, and what I expect some of the reaction would be, is these aren't things that a lot of people want 
or certain people want sort of out in the open or discussed. They're sort of private family matters. And so when you make a movie and you bring it to festivals and so it, it sort of brings it out. And have you heard anything from in families or anyone else heard anything in terms of, of that kind of feedback? Has, there, have, has the reaction been positive or has been any sort of measured, wait a second now? Well, when my parents first saw it, well, they heard yeah, he was making, they were like, are you sure, you know, about this? But when they saw it, they loved it. Um, after the premiere at South By, they um, called me. I was getting phone calls at 4 o'clock, 6 o'clock, you know, early in the morning. And, and uh, they called me. They were one of those phone calls, and they went on and on. And they weren't, normally my parents, uh, because I'm their daughter, they talk about, you know, oh, you were great. They didn't say anything about me. They talked about the story and how this needs to get out, so, which is a testament, you know, in itself, so uh, they loved it. They were skeptical when they heard about it, but when they saw it, they loved it. And that's, uh, she touched on it earlier, but I think that's another thing that this family had to realize throughout this film. T.D. Jake said it best once. He said, sometimes people forget he's the male man and not the male. And they start to focus more on him more than his message. And I feel like that's, that's something, another thing that the story and the family touches on quite, quite delicately and, and real. So I love that part about the film as well. I have always um, been proud of, of young people. I'm, I'm one of those people, I, I really love teenagers and young people. So uh, and at this particular point in my life, I, in my career, this is 40 years. <laughs> experience for me. I, I enjoy working with young uh, new directors and especially those who who know what they're doing. And uh, I have a lot of confidence in them because I think that the future of film is, as well as the future of what's going on in America lies in the hands of our young people. So um, it just happened that I was on stage doing a play at the, when I met uh, Michaela and uh, she told me about Yaki, and I saw his work, and I said, oh, wow, this is something really great. And um, then it came up that he was going, planning to do this. I said, well, get in touch with my manager and see, because I have no idea when, I'm, when I have free time and when I don't anymore. <laughs> yes, yeah, I just said, just, you know, she takes care. I take care of the show. She takes care of the business. So <laughs> it, it came out this way. But I, I have a lot of confidence, and I was, I was so proud to be a part of this and to show other people uh, the capabilities that our young people have in this industry. So, and I, I, I just enjoyed it. <laughs> and uh, have you had any feedback in terms of the, the types of material you're dealing with and, and, and mixed reactions and that type of thing? I mean. Uh, it's been mostly positive. Um, you know, at, at most of the screeners, I have people come up to me, hugging me, telling me, thank you for telling this story. Thank you for, for putting this out in the open because this is something that we need to talk about. Um, but, you know, I, 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 it's still early on, and so I, I don't know. You know, I, I think the more it gets out, we'll probably may, you know, we may get some backlash, but that's fine because the truth of the matter is if someone gets upset about it, they're upset because they see truth. And if they get mad, they're going to talk about it. And that was the whole point of making the film, is to start the conversation. So I'm, it doesn't matter to me. Well, making the film, um, you mentioned the difficulty of production and that kind of thing. I mean, what was it like raising the funds and putting it all together and getting that end of it done? Um, and where did you shoot it? Because you're, you're at UT Arlington. Was it shot locally, or, or is it? A no, I, I actually shot in San Antonio, because okay. that's where I'm from. Um, but you know, raising the money, it, it came out of our pockets. Me and my producing partner, he's over there now. I mean. We decided that we were going to make this, mo this movie. And so we went into our bank accounts, went into our credit cards, and we made it. Uh, we had a small investor come on later on. Um, but for the most part, it was us putting our funds together because we believed in the project. We knew that it was time for us to take the leap. And so between us, a little bit of university support from UT Arlington, and then our small investor, that's how we made it. And I think, you know, that was the most challenging thing because second weekend, we actually, quite honestly, didn't have all of the money to finish production. It sort of came in a check the second week of shooting. So we didn't know what we were getting ourselves into. But, you know, we made it happen. 
you mentioned this isn't your first feature script. Are, are, are you always working on stuff, or are you a writer that always has multiple pots in the, on, the, on the stove, or are you kind of more deliberate and you have one after another? How, how, what's your process like in terms of writing? I'm, I'm always writing, um, and so I always have like other scripts. I, th I have two other scripts right now. Uh, I'm about to start working on the next one, um, because I think as a writer, you have to just continue to write. Even if I write things that I don't plan on shooting or things that I don't really think you know, would make a good film, I'm really just writing to practice writing. Uh, but I always have screenplays. I, I write short stories. I write poetry. I'm just always sort of writing and writing and writing and creating because it helps me sort of keep my chops up and it helps me to get better as a writer. Well, great. We'll definitely keep looking for the next stuff. And uh, thanks all for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you for having us.